So I consider not filming this project at all because I normally don't like to do anything that I'm going to put on the YouTube channel that people can identify where it's from or who it belongs to. Um, and in this case, it's kind of a cool project. So I figured I wanted to do a video, but I didn't know how to do it without actually showing what's going on. I'm not going to show the name that goes on this, but there's going to be a symbol for um, where it belongs. And that's just going to narrow it down to a few people. But in this case, um, this is going to be a shield for a firefighter's helmet. I made one for somebody that I went to school with a few years ago. He's a assistant chief at a volunteer fire department. And since then, I've made like four more um, in a couple different styles. They're, they come in some different shapes and sizes. Uh, but this is one that I've made several of already. Um, and that's this particular person wants. So I'm going to need three layers of leather total for this. Uh, they're all going to be basically shaped the same. One's just going to be the front piece, which will have these windows cut out of it. Uh, the middle piece will just be like this, only solid. And the back piece will also be like this, only solid, but it's going to be turned over because it's uh, uh, going to be a liner for it. And actually, I'm probably not even going to bother with turning it over. I'm just going to rough cut and then trim later to match. And then we'll mark one with the windows up here near the spine of the hide where it's uh, a little firmer leather. Down here we've got, this is the belly of the hide, and this will be softer. So if that's trapped between layers, it won't move and shift as much. Um, but it wouldn't be good for the front piece where I want something really solid to tool in, something nice and firm. So that's why I'm marking the front piece way up here closer to the spine of the hide. Go ahead and cut our windows out of here. And to start with on that, I'm going to punch a hole at all four corners of each of the windows. That'll prevent the possibility of having a nick on that edge that we can tear out um, and cause a weak spot. And also, I'm going to cut all of these lines mostly across, but not all the way to that hole because I don't want to cut past it. And then I'll cut from the other direction to finish it up. And we're going to at least get a closer cut on our piece. That's going to be our middle piece. Now I'm actually cutting, um, I don't know if the camera is going to pick it up or not, but I'm cutting just outside of the line, maybe an eighth of an inch almost, um, all the way around. I don't necessarily want to hit that line, and I definitely don't want to wind up inside of it. But if this sticks out a little bit, I can always grind it or trim it off later, and then just match everything to the front. So as long as I've got the front where I want it, trying to get these a perfect fit is usually tricky. So at best, I found, just to give yourself a little extra room, get some of the excess off so that it doesn't uh, get in your way or make it harder to line things up later. And especially if something moves or shifts or stretches when you tool it, um, it gives you a little bit more leeway to get everything to fit together nice. And then you don't have where your middle layer is smaller than all the rest of them and you gotta grind them all down and you got stitches there and it all starts to look just terrible. Also while I'm at that, I'm gonna put some tape on the back of it. Especially right across where I'm gonna be tooling it in the center there. I want some tape there so it doesn't stretch. Put some on top and bottom too, just to 
try and keep everything nice and neat and even the way it is so this piece doesn't wind up stretched out or anything as we go. Some clear packing tape is a lot cheaper than replacing a piece of leather because you messed it up while you were stamping or tooling on it. Alright, and then we're going to put a stitching groove around, well, everything. So I know where all my stitches are going to be later. It's very important to know where your stitches are going to be on this so you got know what room you have to tool in the center and where to lay out your pattern. Now for my tooling pattern, as I said, I've got a printout from the patch that the firefighters have for the local department. And I've taken and I've traced that on some tracing film, which is just a clear plastic, like mylar type sheet um, that of course you can see through and trace. What I didn't trace was the letters here where it says Fire Protection District. I did trace the ones off on the outside, but these are just a little too small. So I'm actually going to use some small stamps to do those. Um, but all of these I'm going to actually carve in with the swivel knife. Let me get these off of there. Add the detail. Another thing about having the tape still in these windows as your pattern sticks down to it and stays in place a little bit pretty easily.
Now most of this is going to be dyed black, and it might be tempting to think that you could just dye the whole thing black and then go back and paint over the parts that are not black. And that will look okay for a start, but it doesn't really work very well in the long run because the black dye will start to seep up through your paints and they start to get blotchy and weird looking. So anytime that you're going to use bright colors over a black, it's really best to brush the dye on around the edges and you will get some of it seeping up um, if you're not careful because it does spread. As you can see, especially if you got a loaded brush and you just barely touch it, you can see that it blooms out. And you can sort of watch it creep in, so you don't need to get right up to the edge sometimes until your brush is almost empty. Then you can knock most of the dye off of it and go back. And the same with trying to get back into these corners. Knock most of the dye off somewhere else that's going to be black. And then you can work back up in there. Another thing about using black dye in a brush, I've got black uh, electrician's tape wrapped around here. Another thing I'm not sure is going to show up real well on the camera. Um, because this brush, once you use it for black dye, it is always a black dye brush after that. There's never any way that I figured out to get enough dye out of there that it wouldn't stain something still. Uh, so I just basically wipe it off and leave it as a black dye brush from here on out. I might dip it in some denatured alcohol or something like that to try and clean out some of the dye that builds up in it, but like I said, you can't really get it all. Once we got all our details done, we can go to a dauber to fill in those other areas. Uh, kind of while we're on the topic of coloring, uh, the middle piece, which is going to be behind these windows, is going to have um, just these areas painted white and then black letters on them. I'm not going to show that because, like I said, I didn't want to put the name of the person that I'm making it for out in the video. So, so that's what's going to go on with that piece, which you're probably not going to see again until I'm putting everything together. I don't have a name taped over then. Um, this piece, as the black dye is drying and still getting on my fingers, uh, I'm going to paint in all the details. The background is a dark blue, yellow, red, and white details in there. Uh, paint it all in and get that done so it can start drying.
Now trying to paint in these little letters is really tricky. Just trying to hit just the letter after you've got the part that's raised around it um, painted. So what I find works best for me is that I'll take and paint this a dark color, the same dark blue that I'm using. And then after it dry, I'll go back over with the yellow that's supposed to be the background color of that. And as I'm going through it, I'll just scrape off the paint that gets down into the letters and expose that dark color that I've got underneath. It means I usually have to go over a couple times to go around that, but it saves me a lot of trouble trying to get those letters just right. Now you could uh, find a very fine line brush or marker or something to go around that.
Okay, now as I mentioned before, I don't like putting any videos out that have somebody's name on what I'm making. So I do have it on here, but it's covered up. Because um, I don't like to show that. But yeah, his uh, rank in the fire department's up here, and his name, his last name is down across here. And now it's time to get this all glued together. We've got our back piece is just solid black. Our middle piece. And then this top piece. And we got to get them all glued on there. And then it's just... Let's grab a leather scrap. Now these actually have a slight curve to them uh, that I'm going to put in now before I stitch it and it'll be a little bit easier to do and it should stay put once I've got it all glued together and stitched. We'll go ahead and put that little bit of curve to it and let all the glue set. Then it's take it to the machine and stitch it come back and do a lot of trimming and then grind all the edges to match and finish them up. Now this is actually pretty straightforward to stitch. I've got to stitch all the way around the outside and I've got to stitch around each of these windows. Um, but if I'm really tricky about it, I can pretty much do it all in one go. I'll start down here and around this window, then around the outside and then around this window and then back down to here. And I should be done when I'm down here and I've overstitched a little bit. So I should be able to do it all even without putting the machine in reverse and just run it all the way around. Now, of course, if I lose track along the way, I'll have to do something different. All right, there we go. Let's go trim some edges. Okay, now up until this point, it hasn't really mattered if I've got everything lined up, except for the letters in here had to line up inside these windows. I taped over them, but they lined up before I taped them over. Uh, and then I trimmed the tape so I knew that was exactly what I needed to line up on. Now, you might even notice that some of these lines I marked earlier, it doesn't line up with. That's because when I had the letters in there, I decided... If I shifted it a little bit like this and a little bit like that, it would look better. And that's also why I left extra, because some places I'm right near an edge, some places I've got plenty of room. But up until that point, it didn't really matter. That's the only thing that really mattered. So I wanted to make sure that I had a little bit of wiggle room all the way around, so I don't wind up with a, an edge that doesn't line up right. And as you can see now, all I have to do is just trim this and finish the edges up. Whereas if I got it off, I might have to completely redo a piece to get it to fit. So I'm just going to grab my, my trusty fancy round knife that I made. And we're just going to trim off a bunch of this excess leather. We don't have to get it perfect because I'll take it downstairs to the sander take any excess off past that edge. Okay, and it's kind of the usual, the final steps. Got to finish up these edges. So it's going to be bevel, dye, black oil dye, some gum dragon and then slick it. 
but it's a pretty simple job of slicking these. It's a pretty basic, just the outside edges. Not really anything complicated. Yeah, nice smooth burnished edge all the way around. Now the only other thing is that there's usually two holes punched in these. Right here and right here. Um, they don't always come with them already punched. So firefighters are actually, in my experience, or at least from the apartments I deal with, uh, they're used to punching those holes or drilling them through themselves because it does vary a little bit for each helmet. So they'd rather not have holes already punched in it and just drill them out themselves so that they know that they can get them in the right spot. And it's pretty easy for them to just take it to their helmet, push on it, and get a couple marks that they can then drill through. So, in other words, my work here is done. <laughs>